459. Consider a cylinder containing a mixture of liquid carbon dioxide in equilibrium with gaseous carbon dioxide at a initial pressure of 65 atm and a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Sketch a plot depicting the change in the cylinder pressure, okay, with time as the gaseous carbon dioxide is released at that constant temperature. Okay. So ultimately, what is the question asking for? Well, we have to sketch a plot. So it's not this uh, plot right here, because this is just a reference that we're going to get into. This is the phase diagram chart for the substance in question, which is carbon dioxide. But we have to at least uh, start some type of sketch or a plot, which basically means a graph. So I'm going to make a graph for myself. What a beautiful graph, right? Here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, and it seems like we want to depict the change in the pressure. So when we're talking about pressure, uh, we're talking about it in the gas phase, right? Because the gas has a certain pressure. So we're talking about CO2 gas. What's happening to CO2 gas um, as time goes on? Now, time generally is always going to be the independent axis, right? Wherever you can make an I on your X or Y graph, that's going to be the independent axis, a.k.a. the time is going to be the X axis. So down here, this is time. Doesn't matter whether you say seconds or hours or I don't know. We'll just say time on here. And then on the Y axis, this is your pressure difference. Okay. Now, it says that we're starting off with an initial pressure of 65 atm. It doesn't matter where you say 65 is. I guess we'll maybe put it a little bit high. So here's 65, and we'll say that this is an atm. Okay, so we have 65 atm, and over time, right, if, um, what's happening with the cylinder? Let's see, it says we want to sketch a plot depicting the change in the cylinder pressure as gaseous carbon dioxide is released. So basically the cylinder is open, they're going to start releasing gaseous carbon dioxide. Now they didn't say specifically in here that, you know, there was a certain time where they were going to cut the, the, the release valve off. So we have to assume that at the end of the day, as time goes on and on and on, we have to assume that at the end, there will be no more pressure because you're just, you know, releasing the valve or whatever the cylinder has on it and you're allowing the carbon dioxide to be released. So it's going to be released out of the cylinder. So at the end, there will be no more gas in cylinder. And remember, the gas is tied in with the pressure value. So that means that at the end, there is no pressure. Okay, maybe I'll just get rid of that. So we know that as time goes on, at some point, there has to be zero amount of pressure. Whether you put it here or here or here, I don't care, but wherever you mark your end, let's just say that this is the end of the graph, right? You're gonna be ending here. This is where you will have no more, on my graph at least, you will have no more pressure. All the gas has been released. But now the question is, if you start at 65 and you end here, how does the graph flow? Does it go in a linear fashion like that? As you know, the gas was released, does it steadily go out over time? Um, does it, you know, hold off a little bit and then drop down? Oh boy, hold on, my, my correction was on. So does it, you know, steady and then drop down? Does it go down fast and then steady out and then go down? Does it go up? and then down? Well, this is going on with the types of conditions that they gave us. Now we have to use this graph to see where carbon dioxide is naturally at 65 atm and 20 degrees Celsius. Now the only reason, you know, the only problem is that in the phase diagram that's given, the pressure is in kilopascals, but they gave us atm. 
So the first thing is, is I have to convert 65 ATM into kilopascals. Now, we could do it just dimensional analysis way if you want to. 65 ATM on the top. If you want to convert, you times by that ratio. Throw the unit you don't want on the bottom. And the new unit that you want goes up on the top. And I put down here the conversion between ATM and kilopascals. For every one ATM, you have 101, whoa, 101, 0.325 kilopascals. ATM will cancel out. You're left with kilopascals. So the unit's great. So now all we have to do is just find out what it is. So 65 times 101.325. Just checking to see the numbers are right. That's fine with me. And we get a exact value of 65.86 kilopascals. We can kind of roughly estimate if we do sig figs, there was only two sig figs here. So we could maybe say that this is 6,600 kilopascals. Okay. Now 66 because the eight rounds the five up to a six. So we're going to be plotting 6,600 or 6,600 kilopascals on my pressure along with the temp of 20 degrees Celsius. Well, let's find out what 20 degrees Celsius is. Now, 20 has to be in between 0 and 50. This middle marker here is the critical temperature, but the middle number between 0 and 50 is 25. So we can assume that maybe 20 would be a little bit less. So we're dealing with 20 up here. Let's draw a line just to see where we're at. And now we just have to link it where uh, our pressure is. And we're looking for 6,600 roughly. You don't have to be, you know, exact spot on. You just have to be somewhere in the ballpark. So we're going to be in the ballpark between 1,000 and 10,000. And maybe if I do maybe 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6, maybe a little bit lower, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, maybe around there. So let's just say maybe right here would be 6,600 or 6,600 kilopascals. Let's draw the line and correct it because technology is beautiful. And the point in which it crosses, X marks the spot right here, that's going to be the natural state of carbon dioxide at this point. Okay, so at... Uh, 65 ATM, which was the 66 kPa, but at 65 ATM and 20 degrees Celsius, carbon dioxide should exist as a gas. Okay, but remember, in this cylinder, right, in this cylinder, here's my lovely little cylinder drawing, <laughs> you have a mixture of liquid and gas. So you're gonna have some liquid at the bottom, and then you're gonna have gas molecules bouncing all over the place of the cylinder, right? So these are very, very fast. That's what gases are. They just crazily run all over the place. And then you have your liquid at the bottom, which moves a little bit. They have like little black lines here, just to show you the difference. But now, if the gas, or if carbon dioxide is supposed to exist at just a liquid, uh, sorry, at just a gas, and you have liquid in here, what do you think this liquid is going to do first? Yeah, the liquid at the bottom is going to, and maybe I'll draw it in a different color, the liquid at the bottom is going to convert to a gas. Because at that certain temperature and pressure, we should have no liquids, we should have just the gas. So, because since you're, you have a release valve, right, 
and we're allowing some gas to escape. Let's just say some of it escapes. But at the same time, the liquid that's at the bottom is now turning into a gas. So one, two, three. So it's kind of like an even replacement where even though we have the release valve on, the three that left was replaced by the three of the liquid. So what happened in the beginning? No harm, no foul. You, you release three, you gained three. So the pressure would relatively be the same. And this is going to continue on for some time. Some of the gas is going to come out, one, two, three. But now you still have the liquid, one, two, three. That gets converted into the gas. And now these guys turn into gas, one, two, three. Still the pressure didn't change, no harm, no foul. Three came out, three were converted. So you just keep going, right, over time. And you do the same exact thing until you have to have five of them come out. So one, two, three, four, five. And now these five get replaced because they all went from a liquid to a gas. They evaporated, basically. Whoop. Let's pull out the last. We'll keep this one at the bottom here. We'll get rid of this now. Get rid of this whatever this is. Come on. There we go. And boop, 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 boop. They're all gases now. So at that point in time, no harm, no foul. So it keeps going over time. But then there's going to come a point in time where now you have no more reserves. And now all the gas is going to start coming out. And if you can't replace the gas because you had any liquid, what's going to start happening to the gas pressure? Yeah, it's going to start dropping. And it's going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And oh my gosh. Until all of this comes out of the cylinder. And maybe I'll just put it over here. So that at the end, you have no gas left. Maybe I'll just get rid of this because there's no, no liquid. And that's it. This is your sketch. So that's the final answer. This type of sketch in which in the beginning it would be held constant. The line should be a straight line. But then once you, know, you can't replace, then it will drop down until you reach no more pressure. And I hope this helps. <laughs> Thank you for viewing the video. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.